Hello and welcome to our review of the Tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon and Khan and I would very much appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, and dinged the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching guys. Tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon Specs and Features. Let's start with the upper. It's a single layer mesh upper. Uh, it doesn't feel like the softest material to the touch, but I haven't had these on foot yet. They just came out of the box. Uh, there are some underlays uh, along the midfoot on the lateral and medial side uh, that add a little bit of structure to it, but this mesh looks pretty thin and it looks pretty transparent. Uh, the tongue is pretty thin, but there's enough padding to keep the laces off the top of the foot. Speaking of the laces, they are the serrated laces that uh, really every racing shoe or every running shoe should have. Um, moving to the uh, heel cup, there is a little bit of structure there and some padding, uh, which can be nice, but it's not overly structured. Like It will still uh, collapse in on itself if I put some pressure there. The tongue is fully gusseted. Um, there is, uh, there are some overlays around the toe bumper there to hold some of that shape. The sock liner is non-removable. Uh, it's glued in, so like I said with other shoes, you probably could remove it with some difficulty, um, but I generally like to leave the glued ones in. Uh, the midsole looks like a really chunky midsole. It's 39 and a half millimeters in the heel with a six millimeter drop. So that would be about 33 and a half millimeters in the forefoot. And this is a beaded PBAX compound uh, that they are calling Launch PX. That's their uh, proprietary name for it. You can see the little window in the uh, midsole there so that you can tap the plate. Uh, has Elite Carbon written there. Uh, I haven't tried it on yet to see how the midsole feels. Outsole looks like great outsole coverage for a racing shoe. Uh, pretty much the whole forefoot is covered in a latticed rubber uh, and then a couple of strips along the heel. I'm generally a forefoot to midfoot striker so this is where I'm going to be where most of my wear is but for those who do heel strike there's enough to protect the midsole there. Um, weight, it's a little bit uh, heavier than a lot of races with which it's competing. Uh, I think I measured the left shoe at 231 grams, which is 8.1 ounces, and the right shoe at 234 grams, 8.2 ounces. So while that's heavier than the Endorphin Pro, Endorphin Elite, uh, Vaporfly, Alpha Fly 3, and uh, Cloud Boom Strike, it is not as heavy as something like the Alpha Fly 2 or the Cielo X1 uh, or the, the Newton CF1 Carbon Racer. Um, so it's, it's up there, but it's still pretty light for a running shoe, just a little heavier than some of the other racers. Um, okay, let's get it on the foot. Okay, the fit. Uh, these are a little more uh, snug than they look. They look like an awfully big shoe coming out of the box, but they fit my foot right. They're true to size. This is a men's nine and a half. I have just under a thumb's width worth of room there, but I think it'll be all right because I don't feel any forward or backward movement in there. Very secure along the midfoot, um, especially once you get the, uh, the laces dialed in. Uh, the heel's not going anywhere. Uh, there's actually a pretty decent amount of room in the forefoot. It's not exactly an anatomical fit like a topo or an ultra would be, but there's a little bit of room for toe splay, more so than a lot in a lot of racing shoes. So snug but true to size, and I think these will probably feel very secure for running fast. All right, I just did my first run in the tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite. It was 11.36 miles for my metric friends. That's 18.28 kilometers. Um, and uh, I threw in 20 minutes in the middle of marathon effort, marathon pace really. Uh, started out a little bit slower than marathon pace and ended up faster than marathon pace. Average to 624 per mile. Or, 
just under, just faster than a four minute kilometer. Um, yeah, so uh, getting going, it's probably just because I've been fatigued lately. Um, I was having a hard time getting the pace I wanted and then it came pretty easily after that first five minutes or so. Um, the shoes uh, felt pretty good at that marathon effort. Uh, at first they felt like uh, they were gonna be something that I wouldn't run as fast in, like more for a marathon, possibly a half marathon. Uh, and I still kind of think that. I'll talk about that more in the shoe talk. But as I kind of got warmed up and into it, there was some good response, um, stable response with some speed uh, at that marathon and even a little faster than marathon effort. So more on that later. More runs to come and a shoe off. Okay, it's shoe off time. Here I have the Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite and the shoes with which I will be comparing it. The Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, the Nike Vaporfly 3, the Hoka Rocket X2, the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 3, the Hoka Cielo X1, and the On Cloud Boom Strike. Once again, we're at the uh, North Carolina Research Campus for this shoe off uh, because it's near where I work and I like the backdrop. Okay, the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and the Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite. Superficially, these shoes look like they have a lot in common. Beaded Piba midsole, uh, an open mesh upper. They just look like they check a lot of the same boxes. However, on foot, they're pretty different. The Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite feels like it has more underfoot, just more cushion. It would make sense, it is heavier, or I should say the Endorphin Pro 3 is lighter, but the tier is also um, a little bit more stable. I think if I were doing a long run with some pace or maybe a marathon, maybe not an A-goal marathon, I might go for the tier, but for a half marathon, maybe the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 or Pro 4. Um, I will say that the traction is different. Uh, the tier has more of an outsole, and the outsole is slightly grippier, which it doesn't matter so much on this dry concrete and brick, but I have run in the tier in some wet conditions to test it out, and it does have much better wet grip than any Saucony shoe. However, if I wanted to run fast, like faster than marathon pace, I might go with the Saucony. Okay, so Nike Vaporfly 3 and Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite. Normally, I would say the 8 millimeter drop of the Vaporfly 3 and the 6 millimeter drop of the Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite would not be too distinguishable side by side unless you're really, really looking for it. But it's very apparent in these two. And that's mainly because the Zoom X foam is a lot softer than the Launch X foam in the Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite. And I don't know if it's just that the Piba is a softer compound or there's a bigger slab of it in the Tier shoe. Um, but in the forefoot, I definitely feel that there's more underfoot and the Tier is way more stable than the Vaporfly. I don't think anyone would describe the Vaporfly as stable. So if you're tired, you might be moving around a little bit in the vapor fly, but the tier is gonna feel pretty stable. So while there's plenty underfoot in the vapor fly, you really are conscious of the ground feel under the forefoot, at least in this context. Maybe not when you're just running in the vapor fly. Whereas the tier, even on longer runs, you definitely feel like there's a firm cushion barrier, not firm, but cushioned, just in a not overly soft way between you and the ground. And you know there's a plate in there, but you don't so much feel the plate as you feel the support from the plate. So different use case scenarios. Both I could race in, both I could train in, but I'd rather train in the tier than racing the vapor fly. Okay, so the Hoka Rocket X2 and the Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite 
The Hoka Rocket X2, I kind of view as a very well-balanced long distance racing shoe. It's not even quite to the maximal 40 millimeter allowance in the heel, I don't think, but it's in the high 30s. It just, it works well, I think, for most race distances and paces. It's the way they angle that plate, and I like the flavor of Piba that Hoka uses. Um, I should have mentioned this when I was running in the Saucony as well. The early stage Meta Rocker, like the Saucony Speed Roll technology, just tends to roll a little bit more quickly than what I would consider a late stage four foot rocker in the tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite. Now, that doesn't mean much because I do like some race shoes that have a late stage rocker. It just means that that maximal cushion is under your forefoot for a longer time through the gait cycle. And if you're a forefoot striker, like me, you might have a little bit more of that for the impact. So it depends on what the experience is you're going for or your goals for that race or that course. On a hilly long run with some pace, I might really enjoy wearing the Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite because I know I'm gonna have stability and protection. Or for a hilly marathon, that's maybe not an A race. But the Hoka is just more well-rounded and may not feel as good for as long, but it's still suitable for a marathon. All right, Puma DV8 Nitro Elite 3 and Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite. So I know this shoe off is about the Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite, but in running in the DV8 Nitro Elite 3, it's a testament to how much that shoe has really opened up in the runs that I've done in it. Because next to the Carbon Elite, it feels a lot more smoother and softer and bouncier than uh, I originally mentioned in the DV8 Nitro Elite 3 video. However, the tier is still more stable. And I think the midfoot lockdown might be a little bit more secure and I have a little bit more room in the toe box for lateral toe splay. Whereas the DV8 Nitro Elite 3, even though they have a good length to them, they kind of taper down a little bit in the toes. Use case scenarios, again, I'm leaning towards the long run with pace or a, a B marathon in the Valkyrie Carbon Elite. Whereas the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite 3, Still thinking kind of a half marathon and below shoe, but I'm thinking it could handle a marathon, but also might be better for like fast road workouts. All right, Hoka Cielo X1 and the Tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite. These are both heavier than average marathon racing shoes. The Hoka Cielo X1 is heavier still in the tier. Um, uh, the weight is usually a limiting factor when it comes to the Hoka Cielo X1 for a lot of buyers. Not for me. The tier is not to that level of heavy, but the Hoka definitely has a lot more bounce to it. It's that really bouncy flavor of Piba like they use in the Rocket X2 that I was talking about earlier. And the way the Hoka's midsole is shaped it has race legal measurements in the heel and forefoot, but with that big rocker, almost sort of like Mizuno does with the Rebellion Pro, I think you have a greater than 40 millimeter stack in the midfoot. So you really get a bouncing rock, which is fun and it's good for long distances. It makes the tier feel comparatively flat. And I don't mean flat as in without punch or without bounce, but flat as in geometry based, which if stability is what you crave, then there you go. Um, on a wet surface where I just want to be even about my footing, I might use the tier. But 
the Hoka CLO X1 has the fun factor and you would pay a 10% premium for that because full retail, it's $25 more expensive. All right, lastly, we have the on cloud boom strike and the tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite. Saying these long names, it's getting old. Anyway, the cloud boom strike, trying it on just after the Hocus Yellow X1, it has that similar creamy bounce. Maybe not quite as bouncy as the Cielo X1, but it's lighter. Definitely not like a punchy, go fast for short distances bounce. More of a long, maintain the bounce for a, a long run type of feel. Whereas the tier is more of a reliable ride. The on Cloud Boom Strike feels a little unruly in comparison. And that might have to do with the upper. The upper is a little bit fussy. Uh, it takes a while to get a good lockdown. And even now, next to the tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite, it feels not as locked down. Whereas the tier, I haven't really mentioned it, but it's kind of a set it and forget it upper. And there's some appeal to that, not only from a racing perspective, but from a training perspective. You know, it's good to not have to fuss with an upper when you have a key long run or a key workout coming up. So fun factor still goes to the Cloud Boom Strike, but the tier Valkyrie Carbon Elite is still fun. It's just a tempered fun and it's something that is reliable and stable. Good to have in your quiver. Oh, a little Buffalo Springfield in there. There's something happening here. Okay, let's do a little shoe talk for the tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon. I think I've been calling it the Carbon Elite this whole time, but I think it's Valkyrie Elite Carbon. Um, so I enjoy this shoe. Uh, let me say that uh, it's in the context of me getting it for uh, $100 less than full, reta full retail. Um, I was able to get a code from a forum uh, that took the cost from $250 down to $150. So I'm paying less than this than I am for some uh, training shoes. So I think it's a great value at that. That being said, if you go to uh, Tears website and you sign up for uh, their email or you sign up for their text, they'll automatically give you 10% at least uh, off of a first purchase, and that would bring this from 250 down to 225, which would be the same price as a Saucony Endorphin Pro 4, or what the Endorphin Pro 3 was when it first came out. And that's important because I think there's a lot that these two have in common. They both have that beaded P-Bax midsole. I think uh, the Endorphin Pro series is gonna be lighter, but the uh, tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon is going to be more stable. Uh, and you can tell just from the beefiness of that midsole, it just kind of maintains that stack a little bit further through. Six millimeter drop as opposed to eight millimeter. Wide base in the forefoot. And I, just, I never really felt wobbly in this shoe. I did not catch any rocks in the uh, rock catcher there. Let me tap the plate. Um, also, one thing that uh, tier will have over the Saucony shoes is the grip. Um, this outsole, it's a lot of outsole for a racing shoe. It's also uh, got great wet traction. Uh, now, if you really, really try to slip around, you're going to slip around. No shoe is perfect, but this has pretty good uh, wet traction for a racing shoe. Not as good as Puma Grip or uh, Continental Rubber, uh, but it's good. Uh, I know uh, on some forums people have said that they've sized up a half size in this shoe. Uh, I didn't. I went true to size. And it was snug and locked down, uh, but I never really felt like it was too snug, Really, never really felt the front of the shoe. Um, I think it just fit correctly uh, with me. Um, I guess if you are between sizes, like if I were closer to a 10 than a 9.5, but still wore 9.5, then I might go up to a 10, but I would still go true to size on this. Um, as far as um, racing shoes, it's not the most exciting, but it gets the job done, and it's one of the most reliable. You're not going to 
wobble around. You're going to be very sure-footed in this shoe on uh, various types of terrain. When I say terrain, I mean elevation, uh, not necessarily surface type. I haven't really taken this on it, any unpaved surfaces. Um, but I think, uh, especially for the price that I got it, this is going to be one of those racing shoes that you can train in and still take to race day if you want. But as I said during the shoe off, this is going to be ideal uh, for getting into marathon season when I'm doing a lot of long runs with pace and I want something that's going to be as reliable on the 20th mile as it is on the first mile. Uh, but I might choose something different for race day. If you enjoyed this shoe, the Topo uh, Spectre 2, uh, I think this shoe is like that, but with even more midsole and a carbon plate. It's not going to have quite a smooth roll off. I think the Topo is just a smoother geometry and has a little bit more room in the forefoot, but uh, the forefoot is pretty accommodating uh, in the tier, I think. More accommodating than, say, something like the Saucony line or some of the other shoes uh, against which I tested it. So at $250, there might be some more live, nimble racers on the market if you really are just focused on lightweight and speed on race day. But if you're looking for something to get a lot of training and racing miles that I think is going to stand the test of time and wear and tear, uh, this is a good uh, option, especially since there are several chances to reduce that price, either with codes that tier provides or with a lot of the discounts that are floating around on the forums. Uh, I don't know about sharing those on YouTube because that might make those codes go away. So that is my review of the Tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon. Um, I do kind of like this silver color. I was unsure about it at first, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please like, subscribe, ding the bell for notifications, and I will see you on the next run.